I'm underway building the Black Pearl Golden Version 2021. And this segment is getting what I call the bones in place. So let me show you how I got to this point. I'm sure there's many ways to remove these thick pieces, but what I've been doing is taking an old straight razor blade and where the tabs are, I lay the blade in the groove and then just tap that blade through and it's working pretty well. I've already joined parts one and two together and they're only hooked together by this part P1. There are two of these P1s, so I need to glue the one on the other side. I'll do that off camera. Just make sure that you get started on the right foot. Also now that this is glued together, if I have a little, little edge right there which is not quite smooth, it might be a good idea to uh, sand that smooth also. Same with the top side. And again, it was just a very slight, not even the width of the hair difference, but I want that to be smooth. This is the first part that I didn't see anything in the instructions about and I only found it by searching and it's highlighted in white and it's part 2B and you'll need to put that in position before you get started. So here it is, 2B and to give you a reference and you'll see it more later, but this is that part number three that goes approximately there and you can recognize it pretty easily because it has a cutout. So don't forget to put in part 2B. E. Now you can see why it was important to put 2B in place. If you had glued this in place, 2B would never get in. This is all dry fit. In other words, there's no glue. And I do that so that I can insert part number 3. And you can see there's a line here. And you need to file this down. It says at a 45 degree angle. You can use a file. I used a uh, miniature belt sander and put a beveled edge to this part number three. And this actually fits into part three also. And this is part four. Another thing I need to mention at this time, a lot of these pieces towards the front of the ship will have to be beveled. So I will need to bevel that similar to what I did to piece number three because these planks are gonna to have to curve there. And what I refer to as beveling in the manual it refers to as polishing. So you can see parts four and five also need to get that bevel done to them. Any place that they recommend beveling or polishing, there's a, a line that you sand to the will help you give an idea, uh, maybe as you're sanding, how far back to go. The angle they stated is 45 degrees. At this point, because some of these parts do show, obviously this has some engraving on it, I'm going to remove all this. I'm going to stain pretty much everything so that if, if anything shows, it'll have the color that I want. For the most part, I will cover everything with stain, and I use Minwax uh, wood finish. It's a penetrating stain, drives in two hours, and my favorite color is red mahogany number 225. This has had one coat, and on the black pearl, I really want it to be dark, so on some, on some of it, I will give a second coat, and I really rub it in with a lint-free cotton piece of rag, putting it on pretty liberally, and then when I'm done getting it on, I will definitely go with the grain of the wood. Once you're confident that it's on evenly, you can let that dry for a few minutes, don't let it dry completely, and then come back with a rag, or sometimes I'll use a paper towel and lightly remove the excess. Also, don't forget the back side. So 
these pieces for the most part will lay flat and the underside won't show. However, I do the underside also because some of these pieces, if it's a deck or something, the underside could be the bottom of the deck and it might show. So on this particular piece, I will do the underside also. That also goes with parts that may go to the mass that you can see top and bottom. Now, I realize that on some of the decking pieces, like I think this is part number 21 will be an upper deck, that there will be planking on top of that. But if there's a slight crack or something, I don't want that light colored wood to show through. So that's why I go ahead and stain it all. In looking at the building plans, there is a possibility that six through nine, because there's a hatch, could look down and see parts of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain an extra one. So I'm going five through 10, I'm gonna stain both sides. None of this is glued, and I put everything in place, that 2B, 4, and the two threes. And the reason I did that, let me take this clamp off. The place that lines up is in here. So that wants to be flat, and you want to be up against part number four, so it does leave a gap there. And it all fit together, kind of like a puzzle took a little bit to align them. I'm putting this clamp to hold it in place because that's right where I want it. And instead of taking it off and putting glue on, I think I'm just going to drizzle some uh, super glue in the cracks. I might be able to lift that up a little bit and put some under because this will have the planking that goes on it. So I was able to lift this part out enough, put some uh, adhesive behind it, and then clamp it. And then I'll do the same thing on this other side. Now it's just a matter of placing the supports in place, having the numbers facing front. This is part five. From part 13 on back is a little bit tricky. I have it figured out, so I'm gonna try and give you a view of it. 16 goes very low, clear to the bottom. This is 14 here, 17 is on the back, 15 goes into 17, and it also fits in to 14. So let me pull 14 out. So 15 goes into 14. These fit together. I did have to do some sanding to get the piece to fit. And 16, if you look very closely, let me change the lighting and get the camera up close. Or 16, remove it out a little bit. So this is the back of the ship. 16 fits in here. There are parts 2A that are just little blocks that will go on the inside of it once I have it in position. And if you look closely, there's a little line that is etched that gives you the proper angle for part 16. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see that line that's etched in with the laser and 16 again that number is always facing forward 16 fit in that little groove and then you line up the edge with that line that I showed you and then 2A will go on both sides right in there glued to hold it in place. So I'm going to turn on some additional lighting so I can see right where this line is. Might be easier to go ahead and glue 2A in place right along that line. You know what? There's another line at the top. So I do believe this goes all the way up to the top 
there's a line to have it correct on the top and the other one that's on the bottom. I'm going to use that to position 16. In review, here is 13, 14, the number 14 is upside down, but it does face forward. 16 is actually below 14. 15 is a small piece that hooks both 14 and 17 together. And I hope that helps you and hope it's clear. And that will do it for getting the, uh, the bones, as I say, in order. Don't forget to be there. And we're well underway. I want to mention that I'm going to take a little break. I'm going on a, another vacation. I know it seems like I go on a lot of vacations. But this is going to be my summer project, and it's underway. And I promise I'll get it finished before the summer's end. This is Boiler Dan 1, where I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>